Hello again on the remote congress, another day in the Hexen stream. The following talk will be with David Negrier, the main developer of Work Adventure, the little world the whole congress is happening in. Some may watching about uh, inside the stream and some may become uh, around in the world. And David will tell us some details about Work Adventure, how to hack it, how to make unexpected things inside and have a lot of fun in the talk and there will be a Q&A later on in the room. Ada again, uh, you will um, have the link in the end of the talk. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm really happy to be here with you today uh, as we will be talking on how we can hack work adventure for uh, fun and profit. Uh, so uh, I'm pretty sure you all know what Work Adventure is about because it is a virtual universe that is taking pla place um, uh, where the RC3 world is taking place right now. So the little uh, characters moving in the virtual universe is based on Work Adventure. Uh, so today we're going to see um, how Work Adventure was built as an open platform and what it means it means that we can try generating dynamic maps, but also we can try scripting maps. And scripting maps sometimes has limitations. So we're going to see how we can hack around those limitations to open more possibilities. Cool. Uh, a quick note about me. My name is David Negrier. Uh, I'm uh, the dad of uh, Work Adventure. I uh, started the project like uh, one year and a half ago during uh, the... Uh, French lockdown, um, and uh, I'm the little de developer. Uh, so, what does it mean uh, for Work Adventure to be an open platform? Well, apart from having the code on GitHub, uh, if you look at if you've been designing maps for Work Adventure uh, for the RC3 world, you had to submit the maps, and they had to be validated because. Uh, RC3 wanted to have a coherent experience. Um, but the fact is that uh, when you're doing uh, pure work adventure, I mean, uh, you don't have this uh, acceptance uh, and you don't need to validate anything. And actually, if you look at the URL of a map, it looks like that. Here, you've got what, what looks like a URL inside the URL, right? And well, uh, it's this URL here is actually the URL of the map that is going to be loaded by Work Adventure. So how does it work? There is a server, uh, there is a browser running Work Adventure, and they both load the map from any web server anywhere in the world. So if you want to design a map, you take Tiled, this is the map editor, it generates a JSON file, and this JSON file, you can put it in any web server. And the only thing is that the web server here must have course header properly set. This is really important uh, because uh, otherwise the browser will not be able to do an XHR request to the server. But as soon as the headers are set, you can really put your map anywhere. Uh, one of the fun things is that uh, you can actually use uh, GitHub because it has a service called GitHub Pages that acts uh, as a free web server. So if you don't have a web server or Raspberry Pi at home, uh, you can use GitHub Pages. And since it's on GitHub, you can also uh, use um, Git workflows like making pull requests and stuff like that to work as a team on your map. But this is really static files. And since you can host your map anywhere and a request will be made, you could also generate your map dynamically. Uh, and this is where the fun is, actually. Um, so you can take any web server, uh, Node.js, PHP, uh, Python, whatever, uh, and uh, generate a, f a file. Um, so in order to generate this file, the first thing you have to know is, uh, well, uh, how to generate it and what is the JSON format for this file. But hopefully, this is well uh, explain in the documentation of uh, Tile. So here I put a link to the documentation. It's quite self-explanatory. You've got layers, you've got uh, the tiles, you've got tile sets. Uh, it's 
actually kind of quite easy to use. Uh, and once you understood the JSON file format, what can you do with it? Well, this is where uh, the fun part is, and you have to figure out, actually. But for instance, you could try to generate a, a map that is based um, uh, that is changing whether it's raining or uh, the weather outside is sunny. Uh, you could uh, generate a map from open street map data. You could uh, make um, a map that contains an art collection based on the NFTs you've got. I don't know. Uh, really, it's up to you to find a, a, a clever hack, actually. Uh, but there is a few things you need to know. Since Work Adventure is loading the map once, uh, uh, well, if the map is modified after it has been loaded, uh, Work Adventure will not notice since uh, the map is uploaded on, an, on another web server. So if there are any changes, you will need to refresh your page uh, so that uh, the map is reloaded. And also, uh, this means that uh, you could try to present different maps to different players, uh, and uh, they would see different maps and still be moving uh, on to parallel universe, you can actually take advantage of that if you want, for instance, uh, to open a door for some users and close it for others. Uh, but yes, these are kind of limitations. Still, you can do pretty amazing things. And here I've got an open street map demo that has been uh, developed by uh, Jonathan Eindel, which is a really, really cool hacker. Uh, uh, the guy is absolutely awesome. Uh, and, uh, well, let me show you. Here I'm connecting. And, oh, okay. So I've got my uh, little Pac-Man character. Uh, well, if I move uh, here in uh, a place, uh, well, you can see that all this data is actually fetched from um, from OpenStreetMap. And if you have a look at the URL, what is really, really fun, I've got a latitude and longitude parameter here. And if I modify those a little bit, and if I refresh the page, it's going to dynamically fetch data uh, from another place. So it's running on his uh, Raspberry Pi at home, this map. So it's a bit slow, but hey, look. Uh, so I've got another place and he built a database where you can actually put entries and exit a bit everywhere. Uh, so yeah, it's a really, really nice hack. Uh, and uh, well, uh, I was pretty amazed when I saw that. Uh, yeah, I've been speaking about uh, putting entries and exits just before. Uh, you saw that uh, from one point I could go into another map and in Work Adventure, we do that by actually uh, putting uh, a property which we call exit URL inside the map. So on this layer here, when I walk here, I will go here. And this actually is, if you think about it, pretty much looking like an hypertext link uh, on a, a web page. And uh, even more, we've got what we call um, un uh, entry zones that we define using a start layer property. And the name of the layer here is down the stairs. And if I go on the web page and I'm adding dash down the stairs here, I'm, put it, I'm actually entering the page at the very position of the layer, which is kind of uh, fun because if you think about it, well, work adventure map are JSON files that can be hosted anywhere on the web, just like HTML web pages. And exit and entries in work adventure map, they are my mapping hypertext links and anchors on the web. And so that leads me to think of work adventure not only uh, as a platform, but rather as a browser. I see it as a browser of maps that could be anywhere on the web, a bit like a, a, a web browser enables you to navigate HTML web pages. And this was actually the state of Work Adventure in December 2020 uh, when we did the previous RC3. Uh, and it, it was already like that. Uh, the fact is that uh, since last year, a lot of things happened. And the first of things that happened is that 
uh, we had a lot of cool contributions thanks to the Chaos Computer Club uh, because it provided us a lot of visibility. A lot of people came, started hacking around, uh, making pull requests on the main repository. And uh, basically, it, uh, yeah, it, it, it blew up. Uh, we had a ton of new features. Uh, people uh, provided us with uh, zones where you could play sounds or music, uh, animations on maps, uh, emojis, companions. Cats and dogs are cool, and uh, they have actually been implemented not by me at all, but by the community at large. And someday, some, some guy uh, came and said, hey, look, uh, I've got this excellent um, uh, pull request, and uh, it allows you to play animations when you get next to uh, near an object, and the animation can optionally play backwards. And I was like, what? <laughs> and uh, the fun thing is that um, the, the rest of the community was like, oh, yes, 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 this is a really, really good idea. Uh, actually, what this was allowing to do uh, was like uh, when you walk uh, on the grass, the grass can move, so it's cool effect. Uh, and it was indeed cool, but uh, for me, it was also kind of a problem. Uh, because, uh, well, uh, as a maintainer of an open source solution, if I was accepting too much things, I would have to maintain them. And especially because I started hosting a work adventure software as a service solution online, uh, I could not afford to do any breaking changes because my users... Uh, if I change the format of the maps, they won't be happy at all. Um, so uh, basically, if you think about it, the need that the developers were expressing was they wanted to be able to create cool stuff with Work Adventure. And I had a need to restrict a bit uh, the number of pull requests I was accepting, otherwise it would get difficult. Um, so how, how did we do you remember this uh, comparison be between Work Adventure and a web browser? Well, there is something with the web. Uh, it's like, actually, you can modify the JavaScript with the DOM. And in Work Adventure, that we could not do at all. And this was a real problem. So uh, what I wanted actually to do was to open the ability here for people to add scripts into their map to be able to build cool stuff. And uh, with uh, scripting, they could be really creative uh, without having to add new properties all the time. Okay. But in order to do scripting, I had an issue. It's that I have a big need to isolate, isolate the context. Is. Basically, if someone is providing a map and if I'm running a, a, a script from the map inside Work Adventure, uh, well, uh, I'm running JavaScript into my web page, and it could definitely be a XSS, a cross-site scripting uh, issue, uh, which is not good. Uh, so I need to protect myself against that. So how did we do? Well, we used iframes. Uh, because uh, when you run code inside an iframe, it's isolated from the mainframe, right? So if you think about it, uh, you've got the browser here, there is a map, and on the map, I'm hiding a very, very small iframe. It's one pixel by one pixel transparent. Nobody can see it, but it's here, and the iframe can contain JavaScript code that is run. And the fact is, uh, JavaScript, the iframe, can communicate with the browser using what we call the PostMessage API, which is a native API that is available in any browser, and it's a communication, communication mechanism between iframes. So, if you look at it, it's really easy. You can send a message using window.postmessage. You put any JSON message here. And if you want to receive a message on the other, in the other frame, you just add a listener on the message event, and you get that message back. And since these are JSON messages, uh, well, they are, uh, uh, you, you can build a format and check the format, and the communication is clear and um, uh, well-defined, which is uh, important when you want to do something that is secure. But I still had a problem. The iframe I was creating could access the DOM of the parent element, 
because it was hosted in the same domain. Okay, my iframe is treated on the fly by uh, my application, so it is hosted in the same domain, which means that because of the same origin policy, uh, the iframe could access um, the parent uh, the parent frame, insert a script tag, and so uh, basically, uh, well, uh, open an XSS uh, flow uh, in my application. So I had to protect myself from that. And the solution to that, it's little known that on an iframe, you can use an attribute that is called sandbox. And the sandbox attribute, it lets you decide what an iframe can do or not. As soon as you put the sandbox attribute, the iframe is really restricted, and then you open what it is allowed to do. So I'm allowing to run scripts because I want to allow JavaScript, but with just this, the iframe is losing its origin. Okay, it does not have any domain anymore, which means that if it does not have any domain, well, um, the same origin policy applies again. The iframe cannot access the parent iframe, and I'm good to go. And this is pretty cool. So what you can remember from this is that if you use the post message API plus an iframe that is sandboxed, you can actually run into your application third party code, third party code, code that is coming from someone else in a secure way uh, and uh, without the code uh, risking to um, uh, have too many impacts uh, or on uh, your um, application. So what we did after was hiding the com complexity of the window.post message behind a friendly API. And the result is this. Uh, here is a sample script. I've got this WA uh, object uh, that is, uh, well, a global object. And here I'm listening when I'm entering the zone, which is named clock, which is here. And when this happens, I'm opening a pop-up that displays the time. So, okay, so it's a small example of what is possible to do with uh, this uh, scripting API. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, there are already many things you can do. You can read a map, you can show and hide layers, edit a layer to add a tile on it, load the tile set, well, a lot of stuff. Uh, and um, there are still a lot of things that are missing and that we are adding every day. And the community at, at large is helping us. Uh, but there is one thing I want to stress out. It's that because the script is executed in the browser, ch changes that are applied are applied only locally. And especially if you edit a layer, if you add a tile or something like that, by default, this is not shared with other players. So we need to add a communication mechanism between my player and the other players in order uh, to uh, dispatch uh, messages and so that people can see the same map. And to do this, well, we, we added a feature that is called variables. So variables are uh, stuff that, that live on the server. And in a browser, when you use a wa.state uh, object, uh, anything that you set here will be shared with um, uh, with other browsers, what happens actually is that when you call this, the foo dot equal bar uh, message is sent via post message API to the browser. Work Adventure will dispatch this to the server, which will dispatch the message to other players, which will send the message back to the other iframes. And hey, here we are. States are shared, and we have the same values. Uh, in uh, both places. And additionally, you can even um, listen to changes using unviable change here, which allows you to fire a callback uh, when a variable is changed. So with this, we can share a state and so display, uh, for instance, if I've got a door, it can be opened or closed depending on the state of a variable, uh, which will actually show or hide a layer. We have a lot of things to add in the scripting API. Uh, we need still to be able to track other players. Um, really, really a lot of things to do. And uh, But the cool thing is that the community understood that and that most of the pull requests received from the community are now made to change uh, the scripting API and to allow everybody to, well, to have fun and to build uh, cool stuff with it. 
still, uh, there are some limitations. As I told you, uh, the sandbox is, uh, well, often getting in the way. Uh, because uh, the sandbox iframe uh, does not have an origin, so it cannot make any XHR calls, because when I do an XHR call, I need an origin, and I can't do that anymore. And this is really a problem, because often when you script a map, you want to be able to connect to something else. So is it really possible? Well, I'll show you how you can hack around this limitation. And the first trick is actually using WebSockets. Because surprisingly enough, I was not aware of that, but WebSockets are not uh, bound to the same origin policy as is XHR. Anywhere, in any web page, if you open a WebSocket, you can connect to absolutely anywhere, which is pretty cool. Uh, so it means that from the scripting API here, if I open a WebSocket, I can connect to any server here. So a server I, I own, uh, and to share state, to get data, whatever. But I can do this on WebSocket instead of doing this with XHR. The second trick, which is actually maybe easier, is to use embedded iframes. Uh, since a few months, you can create iframes and put them inside maps. Uh, and uh, those iframes actually, uh, oh, by the, uh, those iframes actually, um, well, um, they are hosted on any web server, but they are not in the same web server as Work Adventure is which means that because of the same origin policy, they are not in the same domain, they cannot access the parent frame. And if they don't access the parent frame, I don't have to put the sandbox attribute on this iframe. And if I don't have to put the sandbox attribute, you keep your origin and you can do an XHR request really easily. So uh, my advice is actually, if you are building a script uh, with Work Adventure, rather than using the native script feature, you put a really, really small iframe, you hide it inside the map, you put the script inside the iframe, and you will be able to make, to make much more things than with the native solution, which is, uh, well, kind of interesting. Okay, quick demos. Uh, the first one is uh, done by uh, Jonathan. Uh, again, uh, it's a Minesweeper. Uh, I would never have expected someone to do something like that. Uh, but, well, as you can see, uh, if I press space, oh, uh, I can see here, uh, well, I can play a Minesweeper and I can, of course, blue on mine, <laughs> uh, which is kind of fun. And this has been completely done with the scripting API. And I designed that to open and close doors. And suddenly I've got a full game in it. And uh, well, I find that really, really, really cool. Uh, and the other demo is a WAC one, uh, which is been done by Jacques Olivier and Vincent. And uh, you can play the, uh, the video at this point. Uh, and uh, well, as you can see, uh, well, it's uh, a Pac-Man clone uh, where you can eat uh, uh, pac gums, and uh, you you can. Uh, it's a multiplayer game, and if you if a ghost is catching you, well, you lost. Uh, yeah, and uh, this has been done uh, well, uh, also completely with the scripting API and a lot of cool hacks to overcome the shortcomings of the scripting API. So yeah, so tomorrow, but well, what are we going to do? Uh, well, I very much would like to make Work Adventure the ultimate sandbox. So I'll try to keep working on this API and opening more possibilities. And uh, if you want to, uh, uh, to play with me, uh, well, uh, you're welcome. Uh, it, everything is on GitHub. Uh, and uh, I would be really, really uh, uh, happy to see what amazing hacks you can come up with. Uh, so was that it? Uh, well, uh, I hope you enjoyed the talk. Um, I'd be really, uh, I would be really happy to, to to speak with you about it on the R C three world. If you're uh, looking uh, at a replay of the video, uh, I'm also in my virtual office, usually at workadventure.re/demo. And uh, if you want to come and talk, uh, I'm usually there. Uh, so, well, don't hesitate. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Yes, thank you, David, for this interesting talk about um, work adventure. Um, a lot of people were creating the world. We are inside 
this congress, walking around, experience interesting places, um, working on that all the time. And now we have some advanced information. We can make this place even better if we need another virtual event uh, or let people take place over the internet. Um, you can join the Q&A if you have further questions on this on events.hexen.org slash awesome down slash ADA. So please and um, contact us in our Q&A. You can also use a QR code to get inside and we will change over here right now. Thank you very much.